Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking at a book I reviewed before, some years ago now. It's called Taylor on Criminal Appeals. It's now in a second edition, and it's written by um, Paul Taylor from Doughty Chambers. We've given it a review on the web of appeals, quote, the test of a country's justice, unquote. And here is the definitive guide for the busy criminal practitioner, and that's exactly what Mr. Taylor has produced. This is the book here. It's not a particularly long book in the sense of pages. It runs to 700 pages on. You can see the index there. You get an idea of the structure of the book as well from what we've got in it. It's meticulously footnoted, as you can probably see there, and you've got the very useful paragraph numbering at the sides, which makes it very easy to find things quite quickly. Um, I particularly like uh, the flow charts. Uh, more, more of that in a few minutes, because the flow charts themselves are quite, uh, quite helpful. Very substantial number of cases as well. It's an excellent book for anybody involved in, in appeals in the criminal jurisdiction. The United Kingdom has the proud reputation of having the fairest system of criminal justice in the world, yet it, like any human institution, is certainly not infallible, and yes, it's been known to blunder from time to time, hence the need for a workable system of appeals. And it's surprising, as Sir John Thomas remarks in the foreword, um, that England and Wales did not have a Court of Appeal for the more serious criminal cases until 1907. Since then, many developments have occurred within the system of criminal appeals, most of which are complex, yet precise, and certainly a challenge for the criminal practitioner. The purpose of this invaluable book is therefore to assist the individual practitioner to meet this challenge, the result is a comprehensive guide to the entire appellate system which explains the different routes of appeal and the procedures involved together with the detailed analyses of important issues. It's only the second edition since the publication of the first over 11 years ago and much has changed. The most significant developments have been the implementation of the Human Rights Act and advances in forensic science which have provided additional grounds for appeal. Now, Taylor's stated aim has been to set out, quote, both the procedural rules and substantive grounds for challenge in the major areas in which an appeal or view of a criminal case is likely to occur, and he succeeds admirably in that task, we think. It's a thorough and copiously footnoted work of reference, certainly not too heavy to carry around, but it's good enough, and it's got a huge number of cases, as is to be expected. There are 15 appendices and a detailed index at the back. We particularly like the editor's quote from an R R Times article by Cyril Connolly. Quote, the test of a country's justice is not the blunders which are sometimes made, but the zeal with which they are put right. And that's really where we are with this work. And Mr. Taylor is certainly putting a few things right himself by setting out the law for us as criminal practitioners. So can I thank everybody concerned, including Oxford University Press, for an excellent publication. Thank you. Bye-bye.